Welcome to the Smart Scout Chrome extension demo. We're just going to briefly touch on its features, how it works, and uh, just show it in action. So yeah, let's jump right in. First off, you'll notice some familiar form factors going on. We chose to adopt a native sidebar environment for the Chrome extension, which gives us some really great stability. Uh, additionally, we have an iframe with our history charts here. Uh, and what you're gonna notice initially here is that this Chrome extension looks great. It's easy to use and it is simple and yet very powerful. And so, yeah, let's jump right in. So first off, I've pulled up some Scrub Daddy items here uh, for us to check out and kind of demo with. Let's just start at the top and work our way down. Uh, by the way, at any time while using the Chrome extension, you can give us some feedback using this data button, beta button here. But let's begin with product details. We made this simple and we focused in on the fundamental things that you wanna do with the details of a product, specifically being able to copy titles, being able to copy ASINs with one click and UPCs with one click. We even introduced a button that lets you Google the UPC with a single click. Additionally, you can click through to the Scrub Daddy brand on the Smart Scout web app and we even have a way of seeing how many products a given brand uh, has that would be favorable for resale. We're also building out uh, ability to uh, click through on our subcategories as well. Um, and then lastly, you'll notice a little heart up here, which allows you to add and save products, your favorite products to Smart Scout collections, uh, which is basically just a list of all the things that you've saved in the Chrome extension. So that's it for product details. Uh, really intuitive, really easy to use. Uh, next is our opportunity score, which is super, super cool. Basically, we have a methodology that assigns every product a score uh, from one to 10 based on how good it is for reselling. What is in that score, you might ask? Well, we'll click on this score breakdown here and we'll show you. Um, this isn't totally complete yet. We're still in beta. This, we still have one or two variables incoming, but at the moment, we can see that our estimated sales, if we completely were full of stock, would be more than enough uh, for, to sustain you know, maybe a wholesale model. We also see that Amazon has zero presence on this listing and that the sales rank drops are high, which means this product is getting more and more popular over time. And we also can see though that unfortunately, whoever is selling this product is staying in stock all the time. So they have a consistent supply of these and we also see that the price stability is also a bit questionable. Um, when we check out the historical charts, we'll be able to probably see that. And uh, I'll demo that real quick. So let's isolate buy box price here, you know, and zoom in on the most recent prices. Yeah, we can see it fluctuates quite a bit, even as much as $2, which depending on our profitability could sink us. So I'm gonna reset our zoom here and bring back some of our lines, but price stability is an issue, it looks like. So we'll be adding a few more variables to this to make it a little bit more granular, but overall, this is a very fun feature. It allows you to really see top level information at a very simple one point uh, you know, piece of data. So next, let's look at snapshot. Uh, there's some familiar form factor here that we chose to adopt for simplicity. And uh, after connecting your Amazon account, you're able to see a live eligibility status as well as any potential listing issues of which this has none. If this did have an eligibility status issue, you could click on this button, which I'll show you later. And uh, you know, you can drill down and see exactly what might be wrong with this given product. In fact, I'll just scroll down to, you know, our collections here and I'll click on a really bad product that we use for testing. This is an electric lawnmower and it kicks back a bunch of issues for us. Awesome. So we are eligible to sell this product, but as you can see, it has some issues. Uh, the first one is variations, which you can just click on this way. And we immediately have a drill down of all of the variations. Here's the current one we have open. And we can see that the sales for these variations are pretty similar. Um, 
likely an artifact of the Amazon side data. And so none of these are significantly selling more than the others. We can also see that uh, there is a lot of you know, concern with hazmat, uh, likely because of the batteries. We also see that Amazon is recently selling this product and that it's also oversized. So this is a listing issue cell is excellent for being able to see right away things that might be deal breakers. Um, let's navigate to a different product in our collections. So for this product, um, I know that this product is a private label product. And so I would expect to see a private label tag on our, you know, listing issues cell here. And there it is. Product is likely private label. I can again see variations. I can see that this variation here is getting significantly more sales than the second. And so that might be of use to me, but we can collapse that. We are aware that it's private label. We also know that there's one approval that's needed. I can click on that and then click here and it will take me right to the Amazon sign in where I can resolve that immediately. Super, super easy. Um, sometimes the Amazon API doesn't kick back fees, which means we go for some defaults here. Um, so we make that very clear when Amazon isn't, you know, providing fees and you're going to have to fill in the blanks yourself. So I know that this generally retails for about $26.99. So I'm going to put that in for our sales price and then we fill in the blanks after that. Uh, unit cost by default is about 50% of the buy box. So just keystone pricing. Uh, we use that as the default because it's a good, even consistent metric that you can use for profitability. If a product has low margin at keystone pricing, you know that it probably has a lot of fees. So continuing on uh, with this product at this current unit cost or cost of goods, we do get a $3.20 profit and a 12% margin. We also offer supplemental data like you know, BSR. Uh, we just give you the 30 day sales there. And we also give you the max unit cost that you could do while still maintaining even profitability. We tell you the competitive FBA sellers, which is sellers that are eligible for the buy box essentially, um, or within, you know, maybe 2% of the buy box. And then this is a fun number. It's the 30 day sales share. In other words, if you source this product, this is how many sales you would get, assuming you could stay in stock. This is identical to your estimated sales up here. So, uh, let's stop at advanced real quick. So for you advanced sellers, we have some additional stuff. You might know exactly how much it costs to prep your unit. You might even know how much it's probably going to cost to ship that to Amazon. And we have an other costs sell as well. Based on those inputs, we can factor an ROI for you. And then let's say that you want to, you know, project 30 units out for this specific product it would take about 1.2 days to stock out which results in a $700 initial investment and an estimated revenue of about $800. So you'd, you know, net like, you know, a hundred bucks. Um, going back to the question of, you know, the fees and whatnot, we do offer a cost breakdown here that's pretty in depth, pretty clean. Uh, for those of you who are really interested in, you know, the granular data about all the various fees that could be incurred when you're selling on Amazon. Um, <clears throat> next, we come to the brand analysis. Smart Scout is excellent for using reverse sourcing or brand sourcing to find products to sell on Amazon. And so we inject some of this Smart Scout data here on the brand, like 30 day revenue, average selling price, average sellers, brand score, etc. cetera. Um, we, these are color coded based on, you know, regular parameters like for example average rating is definitely red because it's lower than a five which makes sense but amazon in stock is only one percent which is great next we come to brand opportunities uh you can see up here that the opportunity score has a little verified badge um which you can also see up here if you were to click on this little guy up here it just takes you right down to total brand opportunities for this brand which is you know 21. i remember this product from our variations and I saw that it's a nine on the opportunity score, which is great, but check this out. This one's a, a 9.7. 
if this product wasn't private label or private label likely, you know, this would be a, a fantastic product to sell. So let's take a little look at it and see what we can find. 9.7, obviously it could be private label. We do need approval to sell. We also don't know the fees. Let's take a look at the average price here. So also kind of like 26.99. And then let's throw in a unit cost of, you know, $13, see what we can do. And then of course, if we were to order, you know, 14,000 units, it would take a while to stock out, but we'd do some great, we'd, we'd do some okay revenue, you know, based on that ROI. So that's like pretty decent, but brand opportunity is great because it helps you understand what products you might be missing from the brand level. You know, Oftentimes, if you find a great product, you know, like going back to this, you know, Scrub Daddy, like check this out. Scrub Daddy has, you know, 33 brand opportunities right here. And so you can filter through all of those and figure out, you know, if any are potential products for you. And of course, any of the data here, you can access in Smart Scout at a more granular level. This link will take you right there, which is fantastic. So next we come to collections. Um, Collections is an awesome feature. If you're not familiar with collections, it's essentially trying to replace your spreadsheets that you make by hand. With Smart Scout, you can just collect products or brands or sellers or whatever, and we keep the data live just for you on smartscout.com. So we have a mini version of collections here that I've named, you know, Chrome extension, but you can access any of your collections via this dropdown. But here you can see I have these Scrub Daddy products, the headphones I'm currently wearing, that terrible lawnmower I showed you earlier, and these highly rated private label products. And you can manage them here, see their, their margin with your saved cost, and then a quick one-click ASIN uh, copy right there. So that's collections, really nifty feature, really great for collecting products fast. And then lastly, we have our settings, which uh, allows you to set default inputs. I currently have a $1 unit prep cost a 25 cent inbound shipping cost. And then I've bumped my unit cost percentage to 55%. But you know, in this economy, yeah, 55 is probably fine. So we could probably bump that up to 60 actually. And boom, it's saved. Last thing in settings is listing issues. These are where you can turn on and off the various uh, alerts that we give for, you know, listings that might be private label or variation or oversized, hazmat, Amazon presence, right? So they all affect this guy here. So let's actually test that out. We'll go back to our, our lawnmower guy and we'll see what happens. We'll go down to our settings here. And uh, let's say for some reason, I handle oversized products super, super well. Boom, oversize is no longer showing up. Turn it back on, there it is. So um, that is a, the Chrome extension in a nutshell. Um, obviously we have the historical charts here as well with some pretty simple toggles to make it a little bit easier to use in a much larger space. So pretty nifty. Um, Again, as you use the Chrome extension, as it goes live over the next few days, uh, make sure to leave us some feedback here at the, uh, the beta site, which is just a form that I've created. And uh, I'll ask you a little bit about yourself. And uh, yeah, and then you can you know leave us some open feedback here. So overall, uh, we're really excited to launch this Chrome extension. We built something really great for you and we hope you like it. Uh, and yeah, let us know what you think.